you mentioned that you know uh, of uh, depopulation, and uh, it really strikes me very hard because I have a very uh, uh, old mother now, and uh, she's surviving because of my medication. That's right. Right. So medication is actually helping her to go on her life, you know. But you, you strike a very uh, interesting uh, ending whereby you say when the old age are coming and the, what about the younger generation? How are they going to take care of the old? I'd like you to really to elaborate that from the Buddhist point of view. I was just waiting for your comment on that. <laughs> okay. I don't have a really good answer except to say the Buddhists have always indicated that the Sangha is one of the three jewels. And the Sangha is the community. So there's no doubt in my mind but what the future we have to have some form of Sangha to help us deal with these issues. And it has to be communal. And we all have to share in it to some degree. It's too much to put on one person sometimes the whole situation with maybe four. I have one friend, his, his wife is dead, but he, she died early and he's got four of, they were both only children. He's got four old people now who are dependent on him in many ways, maybe not financially, but emotionally. It's tough. That's too much for one person. So I think that's one answer that I, I feel will probably have to emerge, is that we've got to take the jewel of the Sangha and the community and ask ourselves the question of how can communities be constructed in such a way as to help meet some of these really important needs and to take the pressure off of people who just can't handle it. Because if you put people under too much pressure, then they themselves become a problem. And instead of being part of the solution, they have now become the problem because they have a breakdown because they can't handle all the pressures that are on them. So we must figure out ways to help out in that, that regard. The other is, as an old person, I ask myself the question, um, why do we retire at 65? Who made that decision? It was the Archduke of Vienna. Somebody said to him, we need to decide when the government workers should retire. When do you think, Archduke? He thought, hmm. 65? Okay, that's it. <laughs> and we live with it as if it's somehow really been researched and that's exactly when people ought to do it. And we build up in ourselves and we say, yeah, yeah, I'm almost there. And at 65 somehow, the morning I wake up, I'm 65, I, my body changes and my mind changes, and I become an enfeebled old man and I better retire. That's why I decided, my wife says I've never read the manual about how to retire, but I figure that all of you who are younger, you are going to have to contribute to the world longer than my generation did. You can't retire as early, I don't think. You're, you're going to be too much needed. We have to work longer, and I don't think that it's some great um, tragedy to do that for a lot of people, and myself included. I feel much happier being busy and active and contributing. I see a lot of my friends who live in, in retirement homes and they try their best to entertain themselves. And I just can't stand it after a while. I have to leave. It's like these were people that I knew as university professors and as successful business people. 
and they're playing games to try to keep themselves from being bored. Well, I don't think that that's a good solution, to be truthful. It's not that we don't need to have places to take care of people who need the help and need support and can't just do it on their own. And as I said, the community has to come in and help and work on this. But as individuals, we have to ask ourselves the question, what can I do to be productive and give as much back to life as I possibly can out of compassion for what it's going to take to get us through this big period of time? So um, I'm calling on people. I look sometimes at retired businessmen. They're so good at making money, and then they retire. And I've said to one of them, you should have kept working and make the money. You don't need the money. But there are all these causes and all these things that could really use that money. If you have kept on going for another five years just as a contribution to society and helped them by saying, here, I'm going to show you how to make money and I can do it. I enjoy it. I was really stunned to read the statistics on airline pilots. The average airline pilot dies two years after retirement. Horrible, isn't it? I mean, retirement is death, a <laughs> death sentence. <laughs> you, if you're flying, keep on flying as long as you can. So I think that it's possible for us to look toward that new world in one way with all the aging people and like myself I think well it would be a lot more meaningful to me to think about a world in which I'm still needed and which people say come on and help let's do it together you're not put outside you're not put out to pasture because they call it ageism and it's really true people treat you in a different way as you grow older which is fine. They become very deferential. Um, they become very condescending in a way. Uh, they let you know that I know you're old and so consequently you don't, you're not quite with it anymore, are you? And um, So I would like to f have a more upbeat feeling about what it's like. So those of you who are going to reach retirement age just when these things become really crucial, maybe you need to think about what you could do at that period to make life continue to be interesting and productive. And with that much creativity and productivity, I think it could shift the megatrend considerably.